Hej allihopa, detta är Ash från Beans for English och det är Fact Friday igen. It is Fact Friday. And Fact Friday is where I give you some random and interesting facts about Sweden every single Friday. So if you do enjoy this content, hit that subscribe button below and also hit the little bell next to it because then you'll get a notification when I post another random video like this. Anyway, it's always good to name my sources when I'm talking about facts like this. And this one comes from the coincompetition.eu website. And it's all about the currency of Sweden. So the currency here is the Swedish krona, also known to immigrants and expats like me as the Swedish crown, because krona means crown. You'll also see it known by its symbol of the S-E-K, a little bit like the British pound has G-B-P. So S-E-K is where you'll often see it written. And interestingly, Sweden is one of the very few EU member states that didn't take on board the euro. In fact, they had a referendum in 2003 where the majority said no. And even then, there's been unofficial polls since then where the support for the euro has declined even further. So put simply, there's not a chance that Sweden will ever adopt the euro. And I'm glad of that because I have to say, as kids, we traveled around Europe with my parents. And one of the fun parts of that was actually getting the local currency. You know, I loved it when we went to Spain and getting the peseta. The peseta? Yeah. And, you know, all these different currencies and the different coins and the, the different notes. And it was quite exciting, especially to smuggle some of them back home and keep them for next time you went there. And the French franc, the German mark. But it's all gone now. And I think it's a shame that you travel to all these countries and it's just the euro. How boring. So good on Sweden for keeping their currency. So the currency in Sweden was originally called the Riksdaler. Riksdaler. Interestingly, that was prior to 1873, because in 1873, Sweden, despite showing disapproval for any kind of uh, cross-national currency like the euro, did actually form an alliance with Denmark and Norway. It was called the Scandinavian Monetary Union, and they all agreed to basically use a standard currency based on the gold standard. So that gold standard is basically when you're using gold metal and it's a means of translating that to a value of a coin and it's a standard that you have to maintain. So Norway, Denmark and Sweden all using this same shared currency called the krona. But then the First World War struck and the union was actually dissolved at that point. But all three nations, Sweden, Norway and Denmark, continued to use the name krona. I think in Norwegian it's krone uh, and probably in Denmark as well. And uh, But they, they went their separate ways, so there was no alliance, no union between them all, which is kind of a shame, I think, because it's nice that they were working together. So that's the krona. You might be wondering, well, OK, but is there anything less than a krona? Well, yes, there was, or is, or kind of, yeah, was, really, because there was actually a hundred ore to the krona. So a bit like the pound has a hundred pence, the krona had a hundred ore. But just as recently as 11 years ago, so in 2010, the Swedish government got rid of it. And the reason is quite simple. They discovered that the cost of producing a one ore coin actually cost more than one ore, and therefore it wasn't worth producing it. And the same applies to all of the, the coins that were produced below one krona. So they scrapped it, all of them. And it kind of makes sense, really. That's why when you shop in Sweden, you generally won't find anything, anything less than one krona. And if you do, then it's all electronic payment anyway. And so it doesn't really matter. So there are basically uh, the, the lower than the krona, but above the krona, there are actually still some coins. So currently in circulation are one krona, two, five and ten. But to be honest, you don't really see them that often. In fact, I remember the days you know, when I was younger, coins were... Brilliant. That's all we ever spent. And it was great collecting coins as a kid as well, your piggy bank and your pocket money. But sadly, that's no more. You just don't really see coins over here. In fact, until 1902 in Sweden, all coins were gold. Isn't that nice? But Sweden couldn't maintain the gold standard, which is this kind of global acceptance of what a gold coin is worth in relation to currency and the metal. And so instead, they used to move to using other metals such as silver, bronze and aluminium. In fact, even the five krona and the ten krona coin today are made of Nordic gold, which is actually an alloy of copper, aluminium, zinc and tin. Other coins are made of copper plated steel. 
quite interesting. It does make you think, doesn't it, when you see these beautiful coins with all the different metals and different colours, there actually, actually are different metals and it's incredible how they still produce them. But imagine the cost of producing those coins. No wonder countries are glad to see them gone. Now above coins, of course, there are also banknotes. Now we do still see banknotes over here. I saw a lady paying with them the other day. I think you'll find it's normally the, the older generation that still pay with banknotes because they like to have the money in their hands. Whereas the younger generation, and me, because I'm not young anymore, like we like our e-currency. You know, it's 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 just ease, isn't it? It's easy to, to maintain, it's easy to hold, you know, you just have a card or even a watch or a phone now for contactless. It's much, much simpler. But the, the notes are still in circulation. They're available in 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, and 1,000 krona. But a little bit like the notorious UK 50 pound note, you don't see many of those in circulation. And the same with the Swedish, you don't see many 500 or 1,000 krona notes. I certainly don't think I've ever seen one, actually. Um, the notes that they do have carry the faces of famous people as well, just like in every other country. But as I said, really, the, the most popular currency here now in Sweden, not currency, the most popular form of Swedish krona is the e-wallet. And that means contactless straight to the bank using your phone and tapping your phone or using your card contactless chip or, you know, any, any type of payment like that now. Even, you know, Swish is a very, very popular mechanism here. If you go and buy something from somebody these days, secondhand from Blockit or Facebook Marketplace, it's normally Swish that they ask for. And Swish is an app on your phone and it connects straight to your bank account and you can transfer money like that so quickly. And the good thing about it as well is that it, it leaves a money trail. That's why Sweden endorsed these e-payments because it stops the spread of drug money. It means that, that everything's traceable. When you pay by Swish or if you pay by uh, uh, any kind of electronic means, there's a trail. It means it gets rid of dirty money, and that's why uh, the, the government supports it and prefer it. So it's an interesting old history. It's very, very interesting that Sweden, Norway, and Denmark had a, a monetary alliance at one point, but not anymore, but they still kept the name. I like that. That's the interest, most interesting part of the fact today, I think, because I didn't know that. Also that the Swedish currency originally was called the Riksdaler. Riksdaler. That's also quite interesting. Anyway, so next time you go and buy something, think about being being Swenglish Fact Fredo, where you learnt a little bit more about the money that you're spending. And I hope it was interesting. Comment below with your thoughts about this Fact Fredo. And also, what are you doing this weekend? I'd be interested to hear. Have a good one. Thanks very much for watching.